Photoshop Layers does allow us to create double exposure-like effects, even when neither of the two images were shot with this idea in mind. Let's begin with this image, which has been edited in Camera Raw, up to and including any noise suppression. As you can probably tell, it's a car bonnet in the rain. The flower image you're viewing here is complementary in colour to the blue of the car. And it's that colour combination and seeing both of these thumbnails together in the same folder which gave me the idea. The final image looks like a double exposure but in fact it's a simple layer blend. So what I have open in Photoshop here is both of these images. There's the car on the tab up on the left. We need to concentrate on the flower for the moment. Because what I'd like to do here is to go to my select menu from the menus at the top and ask Photoshop to do its best to select the subject. Now, when we first see the selection appear, it looks pretty good. But if we zoom in, we can see that it has missed one or two places. Here's one, but there's one or two others as well. Now we could use the selection tools to repair this fairly easily, but I think the magic wand tool may be even quicker. So I'm gonna select that and give it a try. I'm gonna select the option here that says, select one selection from another, because we've selected the subject, the subject is a flower, so this area here has been selected by mistake. So I would need to remove from a selection by clicking into that area. There you can see it's done a pretty good job. I'm gonna hit Control zero to fit the image on screen. And if we look around, you'll see one or two other places where it's done a similar thing. Looks like a little drop of water there. I can ignore that, but I think if I click there, you can see it's making a pretty good selection. So what I'm gonna do is go around the outer edge. There's one or two other places where I can do exactly the same, and then I'll zoom out. So here I'm pretty satisfied with the selection around the flower, but if we look down the stem of the flower, we can see down the bottom, it's not been fully selected. So let me just zoom in and take a look because I may need the entire length of this. In fact, I think we're going to need a little more. So here, if I'm gonna to try to use the magic wand, I would need to switch this from taking away from a selection to adding to a selection because now I want to add to the select subject option that I chose first. So I'm gonna go back to that one and click it and there's the little plus. And if I click around here, I think we can probably do this pretty effectively. One of the things that I'm considering here is we're going to be blending this image with the car bonnet. So that's going to make things a little bit more forgiving, but nevertheless, always a good idea to do things right. I'm gonna hit Control zero once again to fit the entire image on screen, because I think we've got the selection just about right. Now here's a little tip when we're doing this sort of work. We've not spent an enormous time making this selection. Nevertheless, if we decide later we want to come back and have another go, it would be nice to have that selection saved for us. If you'd like to do that, it's pretty quick and easy. If we go to the select menu, we can go down and we choose save a selection. It's automatically going to create a new channel for us. Don't worry too much about that. Just give it a name and OK. Now we can save this image as a JPEG, as a Photoshop file, and whenever we open it up in the future, and I'll prove this by first going to my Control D to delete the selection, we can go back to the Select menu now we can choose to load a selection, choose the flower, there may be more in here, but probably not. And when I click, there's the selection back. That can be quite useful. What I'm gonna do with that selection is I'm gonna to go to Select and Mask. And over on the right-hand side, I'm gonna drop the feather here 
right the way back. In fact, I'm going to dial in just 0 0.5. I just want a little bit of softness around the outer edge and I'm going to click OK to output this to a selection. So we've softened the edge of that line. I have said in previous videos that we could apply a layer mask here, but I'm going to do something a little different here. I don't think that's necessary. I'm going to hit Control C, which is the universal keyboard shortcut for copy. So if I switch back to my bonnet and I hit Control V, which is the universal shortcut for paste, you can see we're well on our way. The next thing I'd like to do is to just select my crop tool for a moment and click into the picture space because I think my flower could do with being very slightly smaller and maybe pushed to the right and up a little bit. So I'm going to do that before I do anything else. So let's come away from the crop, select this image at the top and go to Edit, Free Transform. So here I'm going to drag in the corner toggles just a little bit and I'm going to move this into that position. Please recheck your composition if you're not entirely sure, but I think that looks okay, but I will check it once I've hit the tick. I'll just click again. I think I can live with that. But the problem I've got now is the stalk is not long enough. And I would like the stalk to actually be curved a little bit because the stalk can provide the leading line to the flower. So before we even look at the blend mode that we're going to use, I'm going to extend that stalk a bit. Let me turn off that bottom layer to start with and I'm going to pick up my lasso tool here and I'm just going to lasso the bottom half of that stalk. I'm going to go to my Select and Mask and give just a few pixels of feather. Not too much, but I just want to soften the edge of that selection just a little bit so that it blends nicely and click OK. Hitting Control J, I've just made a copy. So picking up the Move tool from the toolbox, I can now move this down into place. I can zoom in and I can move this around and get the right shape and size. We can bring up that free transform tool again, Control T. So if we need to rotate, we can do that. But if we need to erase a little bit, a bit of the stalk, well, we can do that too. I've got a little bit down there that could be removed, but I don't think it's going to give me too much of a problem. So selecting those two layers, I'm going to right click and I'm going to just merge those two. So what I've done is I've put my stalk or my extended stalk into place. Going back to the background, just turning it on for a moment, what I'd like to do here is now to distort that stalk to give it a nice curve. So from here, I'm gonna to go to my edit menu, top left of the screen and transform and warp. Now you can see I can click and I can do what I was suggesting. I'm going to make that the leading line. I can even distort the flower a little bit so I can bring the stem a little bit further to the left. I think that's all I really need to do. I'm going to tick the option at the top of the screen to commit that. And now all I really need to do is just to blend in the bottom of the stalk if I feel it's necessary. We could use a layer mask or you could even use the eraser tool for that but I need to blend the flower. Selecting the layer, I'm gonna to go to the blend modes. To save time, the ones which I quite liked are Vivid Light and Linear Light. Out of the two, I think I like the Vivid Light best of all. Now it's made the stalk a little bit sharp down at the bottom left, so I can put a mask on here. I'm going to pick up my brush look at the top of the screen, bring the flow rate down to about 10% or even less. That's not critical. All I want to do is just blend that in at the bottom just so that it fades out nicely and we don't get that solid line. Live with that for a couple of days by saving it as a Photoshop file. But there we have the image.
So when you think about what we've done in a short time here, we've created a selection, we've repaired it, we've even saved it for future use, we've added length to the flower stem, we've distorted that to help with our composition, and we've used the blend mode to create the double exposure effect. All in around 10 minutes while talking all the way through. I don't think that's a bad use of our time. And I'll see you in the next video.